I'm Andrei Srinivasan. I'm a solutions architect at Redis Labs. And I'm Pedro Pessoa. I'm an SRE at Stackpath. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to split this up just a little bit. Um, um, so before, before Pedro tells, about, tells us about the cool stuff at the edge, and, and he's going to kind of kind of shift the paradigm around, around what the edge is. And you saw a little bit about that at the, at the keynote. Um, I thought um, I'd kind of step back with, with, uh, with Redis Edge. Because I think you, know, you, you, you saw in the keynote, um, hey, we have Redis Edge. We have, we have this technology. And, and you know, I, think, I think what we need to do is step back and, and say, well, well why? Why are, we, why are we doing this? What, what motivated this? Um, and so what, what we've seen. Uh, on the on the Redis Lab side is an interesting convergence uh, that uh, that you you can now it, it's you know anybody can stand up a Redis uh, sorry an AI an AI model right it, um, there's, there's the tools are there the the you know big computes there easy to stand up easy to easy to, to get going um, there's there's a ton of IoT solutions out there um, there's there's things in the cloud and there's things on devices and so so just um, that, that's also readily available, and we and we're seeing 5G on the horizon. It's coming, and so for, and so for us, that that convergence of technology is is sort of the foreshadowing of, um, hey, we can we can do some something really interesting um, in in um, in you know limited resource compute areas like you know just at the edge of the premise or just on the edge of the cloud, basically very close to the data where. You might not have unlimited resources um, like you do in the cloud, but you still want to have the capability uh, that you that you get out of the cloud. So, so basically, um, you don't want to compromise on 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 what you're doing. Yet, you have you have limited resources, and so we see this um, as as the opportunity. So you already you saw this picture earlier. Just just a recap. You know, Redis Edge is the the um, the packaging of AI time series and gears. Um, we're taking advantage of streams for, um, for ingress, egress of data at speed. And then we want to be able to react to that data. So that's where, the, that's where the, the AI and gears comes into play. And then, of course, we want to visualize it. And we also saw that in the keynote um, uh, that we can, we can leverage time series as, as a way to, to expose that API so that we can now visualize that data all at the same time. So this whole notion of, of multi-model. Uh, one, one Redis instance, multi-model, um, all of your data the way you need it. Um, and yeah, so again, seeing that. Um, so, so, okay, so great. So we, so we have this convergence. Um, we have this, this, this bit of tech. What does that actually mean? You know, again, why, why, are we, why are we seeing an opportunity for Redis Edge? So, we saw a demo this morning, um, Itamar's demo. There's, there's actually been a, been a couple of other demos um, with, with sort of a similar pattern. Basically, this idea that you have data arriving in real time. Let's call it you know, video data is a, is, a, is a fun one to deal with. Um, so basically, the video data is coming in. You're trying to process it because you want to react to it. And then ultimately, you want to move it, move it to the cloud. Um, so, so just you know, this, this pattern just keeps showing up over and over again in, in conversations, at least, that we're having with, um, with our partners and, and, um, and customers. So, um, so a very classic solution that you, again, kind of just see over and over again is um, you end up standing up a lot of, a lot of different runtime to, to, to deal with this. So you have some sort of agent um, that, that's, that's coordinating. Um, you ha you're dealing with your frames. You, uh, you have your model running, you have a persistence layer, right? I mean, you, there's, a, there's a lot of the, the, the sort of the, the easy path, the classic path to, to solving this problem is, um, is you know, assembling a bunch of these moving parts and, and, uh, and declaring victory. So, so you know, this, is, uh, this, this really motivates the, the, the why part of it, because with Redis Edge, I can collapse a lot of those moving parts into, into a, single, a single container. Uh, and I, and I, I, can, I can reduce the complexity of the system. So, um, so now I've accomplished that, that, that challenge at the edge with um, a lot less of a, of a resource requirement and 
I haven't had to compromise on, on what I'm doing at the edge. So, um, and I think that's my, yeah, and that's, that's my last bit, but so that's, that's kind of the, the, the why, and, uh, and now we get to the, the cool stuff about the, about the what. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to pick up on what Andres just uh, showed, and I'm going to, to tell you how and where you could, uh, you could run this. So let's start with that, uh, with that container. I'm just going to, to tell you about um, who is Stackpath. So this, this was mentioned before early in the morning on, on the keynote. So we are basically building a, <coughs> a platform for you to run uh, your, your distributed services uh, closer, closer to the user. So we are um, making a very easy to use platform where you can just pick up your containers and deploy them uh, very close to your users together with, uh, with your data. Um, there's a, the, the, the platform has, has a UI where you can, uh, you can set up your, uh, your workloads. It also has an API, and I'm going to show exactly that. So the path that I'm going to take is from running, um, from being able to run all of these uh, <coughs> containers in your laptop using something very common as, as Docker and Compose. And, may, and I'll show you the, the path in this uh, talk to, from running on, on, your, on your laptop to running uh, closer uh, to your users with your data uh, at the edge. So let's start with the easy, the easy bit. So, um, the Docker Compose code for, for two containers. Uh, so we have the, the Redis Edge container. Um, that's the first one that, uh, that you see there. So it has all everything that, um, that Andre has, has mentioned, and I'll show you the Docker file right after this. And we also have a second container, which is a Node uh, demo, uh, a Node Express demo application, just so that we can, uh, we can play with it. So this is your typical uh, Docker Compose uh, file, so there's nothing special about this. You can, uh, you can run it in your, uh, in your laptop. Here, here is the, um, the Docker file for the Redis container. So this is, on, uh, this is on GitHub if you want to pull it uh, down, and it's also published to, uh, to Docker Hub if you want to use it uh, directly. What I'm trying to show here is that this is a pretty straightforward um, code that you, can, uh, that you can run locally on your computer. And this is the, the Node app uh, Docker file and the build, the build code. So pretty straightforward, um, easy, easy to run locally. And when you do that, when you run locally, you get, you get our demo um, that, that we prepared for this. Um, now I'm going to show you how you can make changes so that you can run this closer to your users on any pop worldwide of, of Stackpath platform. So let's start with, uh, with making changes on, on the Docker Compose code uh, to be able to push, the, to push this to, uh, to Docker Hub. So it's simply adding the, the, image, uh, the image labels and names. Um, so you can see here, I'm using my own, uh, my own Docker Hub account and I'm just uh, tagging these, these images as, as latest. So there's just these two changes from what I showed, what I showed before. And once you log into your Docker Hub account, you build, uh, you build that, uh, you build that and push it. You get these two uh, containers on, uh, on on Docker Hub, and this is the the starting point for what we are going to do next. Uh, next, we are going to choose where we want to run uh, these containers. So on, on the Stackpath platform, you can choose from 42 locations um, very close to, to your users. You can, uh, you can uh, for example, decide to run uh, right here in San Francisco or as far as Warsaw in, uh, in Europe. So you can pick any, any of these. And how do you do that? So these are a couple of screenshots from, from the UI. So you simply name your workload. A workload is the set of the, of the containers that we are going to run. Um, you choose your workload type, that's a, that's a container. You input the, the image, uh, the image names, that's what, what we saw before. Um, 
you set up ports. In this case, we have the public port of the Node Express application that we want to, to access. You select the specification of each node, and then you select how many locations and how many uh, pops you want this to, to run in. Then you, have, you get a nice UI of uh, where it is running, you get some monitoring from it, um, and, uh, and from here you can control all, the wor all your workload. But much more interesting is you can do this through an API. And with an API call, you can actually send this container to those 42 locations worldwide. So I'm going just to go through the, through in more detail through this, uh, through the, the API here, because it has some, some powerful and, and interesting aspects. Uh, but it's still very simple, as, sim as, simpler, as simple as the UI that we saw before. So you basically name uh, your workload. You can set uh, any cast uh, annotation, and the, the AnyCast uh, IP address is very is very powerful. So with this annotation, you will get a single IP address for your service that um, you can use um, to publish your your service, and your users will automatically get routed to the closest pop depending on where they are. For example, if you, if you decide to deploy your workload in San Francisco and Warsaw, uh, a user here in San Francisco using this Anycast IP address will be routed to the San Francisco uh, container, while uh, the, a user in Europe will be automatically routed to Warsaw container. So they will get the same uh, latency even though they are in two distinct points of, of the globe. Then we, we specify the containers that we want to run. <coughs> so the same, the same two containers that, uh, that we saw uh, earlier, uh, the, the Node Express uh, and uh, the Redis Edge container that, uh, that we saw before. Uh, we specify how much capacity we want to give to those containers. So in this case, I'm simply saying that I want to give uh, CP, one CPU to each and two gigabytes of memory. And here is something new that uh, um, we, uh, we, we didn't see before. So because I want, uh, our, I want my service to be uh, SSL'd, but I don't want to be bothered about renewing SSL certificates and so on. So what I've chosen to do is to deploy a third container on this workload. And this third container is simply uh, an Nginx with a self-signed certificate, which will terminate uh, the SSL. Of course, you may ask if it's a self-signed certificate, users will get, uh, will get warnings about uh, SSL. Not quite, because on the StackPath platform, you also get a CDN, which will uh, automatically uh, set you a, a certificate and will take care of renewing all of that and we'll then um, offload the traffic to this, to this container. It's SSL all the way, um, but with the big benefit of you never uh, have to touch this code again or this container again, so it will be um, the, same, uh, the same forever, so you don't have to, to worry about it. Okay, so once this is done, uh, we have to um, to say where we want uh, to run uh, to run those containers, and uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to send them to two uh, locations. So one in Europe, and that's London. So you get LHR here, London. And the second the second uh, uh, region is uh, is in the US. So I'm going to send these containers to run. In four, uh, in four cities in the US. So LA, Atlanta, Dallas, and, uh, and San Jose. Uh, and with this, uh, with one API call, I get my service running wherever uh, I want, and in particular, much closer to, to our users. And here's some results of, uh, of, of time uh, from, from all the containers running. Uh, these, re these measurements were taken from, uh, from Europe, so uh, it's uh, only natural that uh, we will see lower latency times to London than, than to the US, and I'll just explain the numbers here. 
So the first line is actually the, um, the computation time on the, on the Redis container itself. And the last line is the difference between the total time and, um, and the computation time, which will give us, which gives us the, the latency um, between, uh, between the locations. So as you can see, obviously, uh, measurements taken from Europe have a very much lower latency to, to London rather than to San Jose, for example. And um, we now have a possibility to, to expose the, the service to, your, to our users. And this is actually live if you want to hit any of those. So the first URL is the Anycast address of the, um, of the service. So depending on, on where you are, if you hit that, you will get automatically routed to the, to the um, pop closer to you. So this, uh, this, will, uh, this is actually the, the, the address that we want to make public to our users. The other, the other four, it's, uh, the other five, sorry, it's uh, one per uh, pop. And this is useful if you want to, uh, to measure the latency between, um, between, your, uh, between your, where you are and, and the actual location where the service is deployed. And that's what I wanted to show you in terms of the Stack Platform and how you can, uh, you can run this easily. Uh, and now I'm going to show you a quick demo um, about the UI. So we saw first the, the API uh, that, you can, that you can use, and I'm going to show you the, the UI. For that, I'm going to use also a Redis container. And we just give it a name. So let's call it Redis. It's actually a web disk container. So we give it, uh, we get uh, the, image, the image from uh, Docker Hub. Uh, so this, we can set uh, an environment variables. For example, if you, if we would have uh, uh, an SSH daemon running in this container, we could, for example, set a password here. Uh, we are going to to open up a port to the outside world, and now we are going to just select a location here. So North America, let's say San Jose, for example, which is really close by. And that's it. So this is what, uh, what it takes to send our containers to any location worldwide uh, using the UI, using the API, as, I, as also I, I showed you. So this will take about a minute uh, to, to start and deploy. So it's probably going to be a long minute with the, <laughs> with the demo effect. Um, but, um, but it should, uh, it should uh, start up very, very shortly. Um, once this is running, you also get some uh, monitoring data here. So the CPU uh, usage, um, the memory usage. Of course, if you have uh, other locations, they will show up here. And in this uh, in this portal, you can uh, uh, you can manage all of your uh, all of your um, uh, service. So I was I mentioned uh, the CDN before because that's useful in this case to, to automatically terminate the SSL. But you have <laughs> the the web application firewall and so on. So we have the the container running. Uh, let's just grab the public IP here and do something with it, like something like this. For example, get foo, and now set foo. Yeah, sorry. Set foo bar. There you go. Uh, Redis container running anywhere uh, in four or five clicks. That's that's what I wanted to show you guys. So one of the one of the cool things. So you know we're we're, we're talking about the edge, and so um, one of the cool things that we're that we're talking about here is that deployment wasn't on prem, but but 
depending on which, you know, depending on where your data is and where the where the pop is, instead of so you're okay, so you're not five milliseconds away from your data, you're you're ten to twenty milliseconds away from your data. So so think about think about you know when you when you're trying to solve edge problems and you can't actually put a piece of hardware on prem to be that aggregator aggregator of all that data, what you're able to do is still solve edge problems without actually um, having to fight through the, the hardware on-prem. So that's, the, that's, that's the beauty of this. Uh, latency can even be quite, quite uh, smaller than that. So for example, if, uh, if you're right next to the pop, like you ex here in San Francisco, latency is as low as two milliseconds. So that's how much you, you will be spending on the network. So compared to like 20 milliseconds to central cloud, for example. Hi, I was, I was wondering if you could comment on using uh, IPv6 uh, and going peer-to-peer. -peer. This is a look at it. Uh, the cloud-to-edge sort of server client stuff tends to be IPv4, but I'm more interested in edge-to-edge -edge stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can answer that. Um, actually, you can, we can see another workload here. Let me ex get exactly that one. So the workload of, of um, Red is Edge. So you see here uh, a workload running on, on five uh, different pops. So you, you have the internal networking and you can see there the private IP addresses. You have internal networking between those pops. So if you want to do peer to peer between those pops, and here is a five pop example, but it can be the, the 42 pops of, of the platform. Um, you can use that internal network and that's where your traffic will be going. And um, you saw me before opening up ports when I set up the, the workload or on the API. Um, those ports are the internet facing ports. So you have control of what's on the internal network between your pops, between your service, uh, the containers of your service and uh, differently to what you expose outside. Any other questions? All right. We're good? We're good. All right, cool. Well, thank, thank you. you everyone.